The average gun review is full of mostly useless phrases like manageable recoil and quick follow-up shots. But what does any of that actually mean? And how is it being measured? And how does that help you if you're shopping for a defensive firearm? Now I admit, I have sometimes been guilty of this kind of ambiguity in our reviews here. We try to balance that subjectivity in our gun reviews by shooting bench rest groups for accuracy or by weighing a trigger pull or giving you all the gun's dimensions, but that still doesn't give you a very good idea of how well that gun performs as a self-defense tool. In reality, no gun review can really give you all the information you might need to know, but today I wanna to talk about how we are going to try and make Lucky Gunner's reviews better. Moving forward, any handgun I review will go through the official Lucky Gunner handgun test. Here's how it's gonna work. Before I finish evaluating a gun, I will run it through a test that's been designed to evaluate the shooting skills most often required in real world violent encounters. For each gun, I will shoot the test three times and I'll take the best of the three scores and post that to a running scoreboard so you can see how well I was able to perform with that gun compared to all the other guns that I've reviewed before. Now I realize this isn't exactly scientific because it's really as much a demonstration of my shooting ability as it is an evaluation of the gun itself. So if a gun ends up being at the bottom of the scoreboard, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad gun. It just means that it doesn't happen to play to my strengths as a shooter. But the idea is to provide some point of reference. If I tell you that I can't shoot gun A as accurately as I can shoot gun B, you will be able to look at the test scores to see just how much of a difference that I'm talking about. I considered several different well-established drills and shooting tests from the firearms training community to use in the Lucky Gunner test, and I ultimately settled on a modified version of the Rangemaster Core Handgun Skills Test. I have changed a couple of the stages to make the test viable for five-shot revolvers, and I'm scoring it slightly differently, but it's basically the same test that Tom Givens came up with to evaluate students in his defensive handgun classes. The test consists of nine stages and a total of 40 shots. All stages are timed, and the final score is the total time with penalties for any missed shots. All rounds are fired into a single target, and I'm gonna be using the ILFE QP target that is the standard for many law enforcement qualification courses. Hits in the eight inch inner circle and the four and a half inch head circle will receive no penalty. Hits in the 10 inch outer circle will add a half second to the final score. Hits in the rest of the silhouette will add a full second. Any hit outside of the silhouette, including hits to the lower pelvis area, will add a two and a half second penalty to the final score. All shots will be fired at the center circle unless otherwise noted. Here's the course of fire. Stage one, from three yards, sidestep to the left or right, draw and fire four rounds. Stage two, from five yards, sidestep to the left or right, draw and fire three rounds to the body and two rounds to the head. Stage three, from five yards, start at the low ready with the gun in the dominant hand only, fire four rounds. Stage four, from five yards, start at the low ready with the gun in the non-dominant hand only, fire five rounds. Stage five, from seven yards, draw and fire five rounds. Stage six, from seven yards, start at the low ready with four rounds only in the gun. Fire four rounds, perform an emergency reload and fire three more rounds. Stage seven, from 10 yards, draw and fire three rounds. Stage eight, from 15 yards, draw and fire four rounds. Stage nine, from 25 yards, draw and fire three rounds. So on this run, my total time was 29.16 seconds, and on my target, I've got nine and a half seconds worth of penalties, so the final score is 38.66. I chose this test because it's got a little bit of everything, and it's pretty well balanced. There's an emphasis on getting quick hits at close range at the kind of distances where most gunfights occur. 
And we're also evaluating relatively long range marksmanship and emergency reload and some one handed shooting, all of which represent skills that don't come up quite as often in real life, but they're all things that you wanna be able to do with your handgun. I didn't want you guys to have to wait until my next review to get some numbers up on our scoreboard. So I went ahead and ran through the test with a few different handguns that I had easy access to. Most of these guns I've reviewed in the past and right now it's a bit heavy on double action semi-autos because that's what I've been using for the last year. I'll be adding a few additional handguns in the coming weeks to diversify the list a little bit. Just taking a quick overview, you can see that most of the scores are pretty close. All of these full size and medium sized guns are within just a couple of points of each other, including the K-Frame revolver. And then there's a bit of a drop off when you get to the smaller guns. These are more difficult to shoot well, and now you can see just how much of an impact that has on my performance. I realize this is an imperfect way to evaluate a firearm, but I think it will provide a helpful dimension to our gun reviews in the future. I've really tried to make the test as fair as possible, and you can see the extended test protocol on our blog. And of course, the most recent version of the scoreboard will be there as well. If you want to support these tests and other stuff we do here, buy some ammo from LuckyGunner.com.